how does the enterprise agreement work with payments which is quite an important aspect and we will spend some slides on understanding the mechanics of this well the slide is called mechanics of a true but i want to start with the initial order so if you decide in an enterprise agreement that you want to standardize on office professional plus and you have 5000 uh, devices in your organization you sign up to an ea with 5000 office professional plus and you will have paid or going to pay three annual installments you see that in the top line and uh, three annual payments of uh, 5000 office professional plus licenses these uh, invoices will be generated by Microsoft and they will arrive uh, every year on your anniversary date. Um, aside from this, you probably have added some additional products like Windows Server or SQL Server, and these will all be included in the annual payment. But what happens over the term of the agreement? And that is what Microsoft is calling a true up. If there's any changes in growth over the term of your contract, you can add this to the enterprise agreement to the enterprise enrollment, I should say, in the form of a true up. So a true up is just uh, saying that you should include all the growth on Microsoft software and services uh, to your EA at the anniversary of your enterprise enrollment. And how does it work? For instance, if after the start of your enrollment in month three, you start to use 25 uh, additional qualified devices, so you order an additional 25, or you start using an additional 25 coffee, copies of Office Professional Plus, you don't have to pay for them immediately. What happens is Microsoft lets you wait until your true up period, and that is 30 to 60 days before your contract anniversary, to buy these additional licenses that you have taken into use. And how does it work? Microsoft will make you pay immediately for the remaining term and for six months of SA of the previous year. So a true up at the end of year one consists of a full license cost for your product and 30 months of software assurance. Again, if you do the same thing at the end of year two, you add 30 qualified devices to your organization they will need an office professional plus license because you standardize on it and then at the end of the second year you need to uh, true up these 30 qualified devices by paying for the uh, remaining year of software assurance and uh, six months previous for the second year so you will pay a full license plus 18 months of software assurance what happens at the final year? At the final year, again, you add another 10 qualified devices. You start using another 10 copies of Office Professional Plus. You need to add these to your enterprise agreement because you standardize on official Office Professional Plus and you will pay a full license price plus six months of software assurance for the final uh, year that has already passed, but you always pay for the six months previous. Now, at the end of the term, what happens then? You are, as I said, you are able to extend your enrollment for another 36 months or you renegotiate with Microsoft your entire contract. And when you renegotiate your entire contract, Microsoft will ask you what is your final true up or the true up for your last year of your contract because they want to know how much you're going to bring into your new contract. Now, how does it work when you try to add new licenses for pro products that you have not previously ordered. So in the top row, you see the annual payment that you're doing in your enterprise enrollment. And for the sake of argument, that annual payment includes 85 licenses of Visual Studio. So uh, in year one, you start using additional licenses of Visual Studio and you have to place a true up for it against your agreed price and you'll pay that for the remaining term. But in your second year, you have a need for a new type of product, for instance, project standard, and you want to start using that. You can start using the product, um, but you need to pay for the product straight away and you pay a similar price to the uh, true up price. And again, if you do the same thing in the third year, 
with, for instance, adding SQL Server standard cores, um, it will work the same way. Pricing is then being taken from the actual uh, then current list price, whereas a true up price is something that is usually um, taken into account on your uh, custom price sheet for your enterprise agreement and uh, is pulled from that. So when you negotiate a contract with Microsoft, we always advise that you take a look at your true up price and negotiate a dis discount on your true up pricing as well. 